Riding bulls has nothing to do with being a cowboy. And you're going to find out exactly what that means in the brand new documentary, Dear Rodeo, The Cody Johnson Story. We're catching up with Cody. There's a massive double album announcement this week. The album is called Human. It's out in October. We're getting all the details right now. Okay, so I, I loved the documentary so much. And it had me thinking a lot about my own story, as I'm sure it will have everyone thinking about theirs. But I would like to start, I'd love to start with how does this song, Dear Rodeo, which ultimately became a duet with Reba McIntyre, then actually become this film? You know, I think the, uh, the film side of it was more like my idea of being, making a music video. And, you know, I had these thoughts of showing some iconic um, people in the rodeo world. And then, you know, it kind of snowballed into after I talked to Shane Tarleton with uh, – Warner Music Nashville, he kind of had the idea of, you know, your story is similar to Reba's story. Would you be interested in Reba being on the song? <clears throat> and then, you know, of course, don't say no to a duet with Reba McIntyre. And then he had the idea of including Taya Kyle. And then I kind of had the idea of including uh, Pastor Randy Weaver and Trent Wilman. And, uh, and it kind of just snowballed into this big, like, what are we creating here? This is obviously not, we don't have time to put this in a music video. What are we creating? And uh, he said he wanted to do a movie. And I thought, you know, I think it'd be boring to hear all about my story and just me. But then when you add everybody else's story into it, it kind of, it makes it full circle. And it makes it very relatable uh, on so many levels to so many different people. Um, you know, I, I didn't really see the whole picture until Sean Silva, uh, when I sat down with the, the director, whenever I sat down with him. And uh, we started interviewing him, kind of telling me his full scope view of this this thing. It really hit home, and I thought, "Wow, what a what an opportunity to I don't know bring some positivity in a world that really doesn't have a lot of positivity in it right now." Right, and there's something about um, why is it the same thing is true of songs, right? Like if I try and write a really general song that speaks to everyone, it misses the mark. But the more specific I can get about my story, my pain, my loss, my joy, whatever those, like you are, you're the mirror for other people's stories because you got so specific and because you let people in on your own story and that gives them the chance to reflect on their own. Yeah. And I said that whenever I wrote uh, Dear Rodeo with Dan Couch, I said, <clears throat> I said, nobody's going to ever want to hear this story because it's just a story about a guy that doesn't rodeo anymore. But you take the word rodeo. And see, if I had written that song with Dan specifically about that one Saturday night at that one rodeo when that one thing happened and that one thing was said, then you're just pigeonholing yourself. And it's a then it's a, a definite one track song. But the word rodeo is anything. It could be your world. It could be baseball. It could be someone who tried to become a doctor. It could be someone who lost a family member. So it kind of you know, it had that full scope view and I didn't see that, but thankfully I was just obedient to the song and wrote it anyway. There was a quote that said, and I honestly, I can't remember if you said it, if the pastor said it, but it was riding bulls has nothing to do with being a cowboy. But I want to, so I would love to hear kind of as, I mean, I think it's an invitation for people to watch. Like there's so much talk of cow, what, what is a cowboy and what is the ethos of a cowboy and what are these many definitions, but what does it mean to be a cowboy? Well, that was that, I said that, and the, what what I what I meant behind that was, um, you can go get on bulls all you want, you can go rodeo all you want, you can do, you can put the hat on, you can go. I know guys that own one hundred and fifty thousand dollars horses, but they're still not cowboys because to cowboy you have to walk a certain moral code. Uh, your yes means yes, your no means no. There's no gray area in between that. You do what you say you're going to do. And uh, you're dependable, you know, you're, you're reliable. And there's a, there's a certain line between right and wrong that you're, you just can't cross. And that's what, that's what it is. You know, and um, it's, it, it's the irony is not lost on me that whenever I was riding bulls and trying to be a cowboy um, now that I'm not, and I'm not playing music. I'm more, I'm, I'm a, I am a cowboy. You interview Reba in one, what might be the most intimate kind of, conversation with Reba I've ever seen. I don't know if you knew something magical was happening with her, but it was so different from 
And not that she's not always really sincere. She is. But it was so different. And I, I was just, I'm curious, like, did you learn anything from her in this process? Yeah, we're a lot alike. Uh, before I went in to interview her, they gave me a script of, here's the things we want you to ask her. And I just handed it back to her. And I was like, I'm not reading that. You know, I don't, I don't want any guidelines. I just want to sit down with her and just be personal, which I feel like prompted her to go, Oh, okay. I can just be myself. Um, this is not a scripted interview. I can say what I want. I can be myself. And you know, I don't, I didn't treat her like Reba and that's the way I'll, you know, it's now don't get me wrong. It's fun. It's great. Whenever you have fans come up and they're wanting autographs and they're, it's, it's very, uh, uplifting to know that your music is touching people but i want to be on a level playing field with her and just treat her like a person and i think that the, what you're saying that intimacy that you saw in that interview portion was the person not the icon interesting it was beautiful it was very vulnerable and i loved seeing that side of her it was just and actually that's a beautiful connection the person to this human the double album i know the songs that are out but tell me where human comes from the hook line of the song is <clears throat> You know, forgive me, I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm still learning to be human. Ooh. And that's something we're all doing. Um, no matter where you're at in life, no matter how far along you are, no matter how financially stable or spiritually stable you may be, I don't care if you're the pastor of a church or if you're a singer in a country band like me or if you're a successful doctor or if you're the janitor at the public school. It doesn't matter what walk you have. We don't ever figure out how to be human. We really don't. Um, from the time we're born until the time we die, the process, like it, it kind of goes back to Dear Rodeo, the process of accepting all the ups and the downs and the highs and lows. And then when I heard human, you know, really it, to me on a personal level, it related to me because um, it says I never wanted to be nothing but a cowboy, but somewhere I picked up this old guitar. Um you know, and then it's and then there's one part where it's talking about the woman that he's referring to in the song. And it says, bless your heart for never trying to fix me or quit me or slow me down. And I thought about my wife, Brandy, how she's she's never tried to fix me. She's never tried to quit me or slow me down. She's let me be um, this crazy person that I am. And, you know, the process of learning to be human is a beautiful thing. And it doesn't always have to be the happy moments. You know, sometimes our lows are just as important as our highs. And I think considering everything that's gone on in the country in the last couple of years, and I'm not even going to get into that, but people need to hear that it's okay to be human. It's okay to be, uh, to have fears. It's also okay to not be fearful. You know, there's a lot of emotions that people deal with and they think that it's not okay, but it is, it's part of being human. Um, and I really thought that this was probably the most vulnerable I've ever been on the album because there's 18 tracks and I just, I won't say put my foot down, but I didn't really ask permission from, anybody to record 18 tracks we just kind of said this is what we're going to do and uh luckily they came up with the idea to make it my manager came up with the idea to make it a double album which is great it's cool it's kind of old school and throwback but i wanted the artwork and i wanted the general feel of it to be human so that you could see all sides of me there's a song called let's build a fire anybody that knows me, i know i love cutting firewood and having a fire i start a fire in september and it doesn't stop until like april um you know, there's God, God bless the boy about my daughter, Corey. Um, there's different things. Walk up the driveway um, talks about my grandparents. I actually got to play my, my grandfather who's passed on now. I got to play his 1943 J45 on that guitar. Um, everything about this album is so personal. Um, my grandmother's in a, a, a assisted living facility right now, and she's in her late 80s and there's a song on the album about a 90 year old man in assisted living. And it's called, I always, I always wanted to. And I got the opportunity to let emotions out on this album that I really haven't in past albums. Cause in the last couple albums, we've been chasing something and chasing radio, chasing a record deal, chasing this. And I don't mean to sound arrogant cause I'm not, but I'm to the point in my career where I'm through chasing stuff. I'm, I'm done radio. I'm done chasing labeled I'm done chasing acceptance. I'm done chasing all these different things because I'm just going to be human and put out my artwork and hope that it is positive to people and lifts them up. And that's good enough for me. I don't have to have number ones and Grammys. I'm, I'm okay. Okay. 